Welcome to Gateway Day. I'm Dr. Donald Skinner, Dean of the Honors Tutorial College, and I'm so happy you could be here today to learn more about what we have in store for you as an HTC student. By now you know that you can expect a distinctive and flexible program that will allow you to dive into subject matter, which you are truly passionate about. You are eligible for generous scholarships and honors housing. You know what is waiting for you, an exceptional opportunity. It's your story waiting to be told. If you haven't heard us say our tutorial degree programs are unlike any other academic experience in the United States, I'm afraid you haven't been paying attention. I have been in academia for over 30 years, teaching in Cambridge, France, and the United States, and I can honestly say that HTC is the best model of education that I have encountered. We are justifiably proud of the intensive instruction our tutorials offer, and we are really proud of the students we teach. Many of our students publish their senior thesis in acclaimed journals, attend prestigious conferences, and travel the world. Our students are as unique and fascinating as our program is. Later in today's program, you'll get to hear from two of our students. I want you to imagine yourself in the stories they tell and the opportunities they describe. How will you seize those chances? How would you approach the research project? How will the story look when you are the protagonist? At this point in your college search, that's really the question for students who have been admitted to HTC. What's the next chapter in your amazing story? I certainly hope it takes place here at Ohio in the Honors Tutorial College. Enjoy the program today. I really look forward to seeing you soon. Hello, today we're so excited to host this event for future Honors Tutorial College students. I'm Brian Sisler, and I have the pleasure of serving as the Assistant Dean in the Honors Tutorial College. And I'm Beth Novak. I'm the Associate Dean of the Honors Tutorial College and the Director of Studies for HTC and Media Arts and Studies. Beth, why don't you tell me a little bit more about your academic interests and your involvement with HTC? So I've been the Associate Dean of HTC for the last few years. Um, before that, I was Director of Studies for HTC Media Arts and Studies. I think I've been in that role for six or seven years. And I'm faculty in the School of Media Arts and Studies where I research and create immersive worlds. Very cool. Well, Beth, you mentioned you're the Director of Studies for HTC Media Arts and Studies. Can you explain a little bit what a Director of Studies is? So the Director of Studies serves as both the curriculum chair for the department, making sure that students are, are um, taking what they should in HTC, but they also are the advisor for the students. So they are spending a lot of one-on-one -on -one or group time with their students in their HTC program, making sure that they are getting access to the things they need to get access to, taking the appropriate classes, um, it's really the person who is guiding them through their education. I've seen myself that that relationship is just really integral and beneficial to students in the Honors Tutorial College. What are some of the other benefits of being an HTC student? So there are myriad benefits to being an HTC student. A lot of the students will jump right to the academic benefits, things like early priority registration, no prerequisites for classes. Um, there's also a lot of access to experiential learning. So students have things like apprenticeships that they can serve on in the summer related to their areas of interest, um, access to funding related to internships, um, great opportunities like that. We want all students to have some sort, if they want, some sort of um, global opportunities experience whether that study away might be abroad or domestic. So there's lots of opportunities for students like that. I think ultimately one of the great benefits is that HTC students are known as being academically mature. So faculty often will treat them more like a grad student. So they're getting to do um, faculty mentored research at an um, earlier time in their education than I think the traditional student, um, which is a wonderful opportunity. Well, and then there's also the honors housing option to live with a community of their peers and a, a nice facility on campus where they can really get to know each other and have that um, sense of belonging. Um, and then not to mention the scholarships that are specific only to honors tutorial college students, both as incoming first year students and the upper class opportunities to apply for that type of funding. Beth, we've both worked with several HTC students over the years. And I think the college creates this magnet of just pulling amazing people in and people wanna be a part of this place. How would you describe the culture of the Honors Tutorial College? I think that one thing I'm really struck by is the sense of community 
in our students that that not only being a bobcat like the bobcat community here on campus but like the HTC community is really strong I think we have um, this great kind of home base at 35 Park Place which is our HTC building where um, students can come you know every day we'll have coffee for them and they can hang out in the common room and kind of meet each other and it's just a nice place to build that community so in addition to that I think we really treat um, mental health awareness um, in our students as being paramount. So we offer resources for students that are funded through HTC that are free to students so that they have the opportunity to make sure that they're taking care of themselves. Um, along with that, we want them to take care of themselves academically as well. So we make sure that they um, have the support they need through things like tutoring services. You know, even high achieving students need help and sometimes it's hard for them to ask for help. So we wanna make sure that they have the support that they need. Um, I think just to illustrate this, the way that that community has pulled together during the pandemic, the things, you know, we have students volunteering to lead yoga at the house. Um, we have students who are joining a discord together and playing games together in the evening. So just kind of building that community is really important. In my experience, our students are as varied as the 30 plus different programs we offer and no two seem to be alike. Do you see any common traits among HTC students? Really, I think we're looking for students who are academically mature, but also that are curious and that they want to go out there and um, learn as much about as many things as they can. Um, while our students aren't required to take the general education, that doesn't mean that our students don't think a liberal arts education is important. So they are students who see value in learning about things outside of just one area of interest. Um, I think that's a really exciting thing about our students is that oftentimes I'll sit down with a student thinking we're going to talk about one thing and then it's going all over the place because we're just so excited about so many things. It feels like every other day we have a student who's adding another minor or a certificate and not all of the things they're exploring necessarily have to be put on paper but they certainly seem to be taking advantage of all the opportunities to expand beyond just their area of study. Yes, you know, they that not taking the gen ed actually opens up their schedules a bit so that they have some more choice. So while they shouldn't be just taking classes on all one thing, um, they have the opportunity to kind of play a little bit. And I think I mentioned to you uh, that just the other day I noticed we have a student who has three certificates or minors. So while we don't always require that of students. Um, just the fact that she's so excited about other outside areas is really exciting to me. How do you think all of that comes together to translate into the alumni experience that our students have? I think, you know, in general, Ohio University has a wonderful Bobcat network. Um, you and I are actually both a part of that. Uh, we are both alumna of Ohio University. Um, there's something about Athens and OU that kind of gets into your blood and becomes important to you like um, as a part of your life. Um, our alumni are wonderful about reaching out and volunteering to help students, volunteering to talk to incoming students, um, offer opportunities to students. So we really see that alumni network being strong. Um, I'm sure you could even think of examples that you've seen of alumni reaching out and kind of helping out students. Yeah, even during the pandemic, we had Dr. Elliot Shearer, who has both his MD and his PhD. He is an HTC alum. He teaches at Harvard Medical, and he's a pediatric ENT at Boston Children's. He doesn't have enough to do. Yeah, he clearly has a lot of extra time on his hands, but he, during the pandemic, set up a Zoom call with our HTC students just to talk about some of his really um, recent research and to chat about how he'd gone about it and answer their questions. And while a lot of the science was not my area of expertise, it was still wonderful to sit in on and just see the time he took with students and the connections they made to follow up later. Um, and that doesn't seem to be unique to just Dr. Shearer, there are a lot of alumni who, who get involved. So do you think there are any misconceptions about HTC students? Oh, for sure. I know that we have a lot of students coming in thinking they have to have a type A personality and be perfectionists, and that is not the case. Our students have so many varied interests and so many different approaches to their work in creative ways that really it takes all types. Um, I've had conversations with parents before who are worried because their student isn't an introvert or isn't an extrovert and they assume that you have to be one of those to be successful in, in the field that the student's chosen and that's certainly not the case. Um, our students just really represent all different kinds of personalities. Um, there's the misconception that they're only going to make friends with other HTC students. 
we encourage them to make friends with other HTC students, but we purposely put them into situations where they're going to meet students from all across the university, including in their home departments, through student organizations, other honors programs, and that honors housing we talked about. Um, and so while we're a tight-knit community, we are not an exclusive community. We want students to, to really spread out and meet people. And then finally, a common misconception that we have to talk about with incoming students is that your classes are not always going to only be tutorials. Um, students who are just starting to familiarize themselves with our program sometimes think that we're going to shut them away in one-on-one -on -one classes through their whole four years. And while you'll have one per semester, that is not your entire academic experience. You're still going to be entering um, classrooms with students from across the university and having the perks that come with those um, sort of robust conversations that can take place in larger group settings too. And all of that's really important to being a, a part of, of this education. And certainly we often see students who are collaborating with other HTC students, but they're also collaborating with students across campus on different types of projects or learning. Um, so I, I think those connections outside of HTC are just as important. Beth, why do you think a student would choose Honors Tutorial College here at Ohio University over an honors option at any other institution? There is no other honors college like ours, truly. We're this wonderful gem on a beautiful university campus, often voted as most beautiful campus in the United States. So we have the resources of a big university, but it really feels like a small university when you're on campus. I think also the mentorship that our faculty can offer students in this program is by far one of the best things a student could experience. So Beth, I know I choose to be here because I feel like what I do makes a difference in students' lives. Earlier this week, I had coffee with a student to celebrate the 4.0 she achieved last semester. Um, to this afternoon, actually, I have a meeting with a student who's applying for a campus job and wants some tips to make sure she's really going to go into her interview just top notch. Um, last year, I get to help a student find funding so that she could quit some campus jobs and focus more on her academics and the student experience. And it's amazing to work with so many students who are just so passionate and hardworking and genuine in their approach to their education and into their plans for their lives. Why do you choose to, to work here and be a part of this? You know, I mentioned earlier that I'm an alumna of Ohio University. Uh, I enjoyed my time as an undergrad student. I never dreamed that I would be back at Ohio University 20 some years later as faculty. Um, I think there's just something about this university that inspires such deep connection and loyalty from alumni. Every day I'm just struck by the passion of my colleagues to support students just like the examples you gave, um, but also the passion of the students in achieving their academic goals. It's just inspiring every day. Thanks for taking the time to chat today, Beth. We invite you to check out our videos about our current students sharing their experiences and why they chose to be part of Ohio University and Honors Tutorial College too. Hi, my name is Melissa D'Amico. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I am an environmental studies major in the Honors Tutorial College with a minor in sociology and a certificate in law, justice, and culture. I am in the University Innovation Fellows here in the 2020 cohort out of OU. I am also, or was also named a Udall Scholar in 2020 um, for my work in on climate change, and I am also a member of Sustainability Ambassadors. Uh, the reason I came to Ohio University is basically the Honors Tutorial College. I was extremely excited to be able to do a tutorial once a semester with a professor who was um, really an expert in that field. And then, of course, I was also excited that in the Honors Tutorial College, there are not a lot of prerequisites that you need to do or gen ed classes. So I was able to really launch myself into my coursework and, and start taking high level classes um, as a freshman. So when I was a freshman, after my first year in the Honors Tutorial College, I applied for a research apprenticeship with Dr. Jeff DeBelko at the Voinovich School. Through that um, research apprenticeship, I founded the Gray Green Alliance, which is a research collaboration with OSU and their College of Social Work to, and the goal is to help older adults um, become more resilient to the impacts of climate change. 
I love everything about HTC. <laughs> I think that the faculty are extremely helpful. I love that they give so many opportunities, like the research apprenticeship that I talked about, that was through the Honors Tutorial College, through some grants that they have, and that they allow you to kind of start research really early if you want to. Um, like I said, I was able to start as a freshman um, the first summer after my first year, so that was really phenomenal and not something that you generally get as an undergraduate. Advice I would give to students coming um, to Ohio University is just try and get involved and take as many opportunities as you can because there are so many great opportunities for undergraduate research that's really unique to Ohio University. My name is Moss Nash and I'm from Loveland, Ohio. I am a studio art major with an outdoor recreation and education minor. I received the Stonewall Student Leadership Award as well as the Wilfred R. and Anne Lee Conacher Fine Arts Scholarship. The Stonewall Leadership Award was for um, student activism and participation with LGBT activities. When I first visited campus, I really enjoyed the atmosphere. I really enjoyed the resources in the art building. I thought there was a lot of different machines and um, just facilities that could be, I guess, a lot of exploration. I use a lot of the printmaking facilities. There's a screen printing shop, a lithography shop, a type press shop. Um, there's so many different classes um, to fully explore each one of them. So I've been working on my thesis and I wanted to combine areas of sculpture and printmaking and HTC has really allowed me to explore both of those areas fully instead of having to like pick one or the other. I've been able to um, take a lot of both area and like work with both uh, departments and faculty members from both areas. I've been trying to make prints and build them up sculpturally. So while there's these like pieces of paper and these like 2D objects, um, by working with sculpture, they're able to become much more than just like a single piece of artwork. And there be there these larger pieces um, that are much more in like a 3D or installation space. I think I really enjoy just the freedom to explore. I've been able to take a lot of different classes that I don't think I would have been able to take um, if I wasn't in HTC, just being able to, I guess, bypass some of the gen ed requirements um, and not needing to fulfill such like specific or restrictive um, major requirements, I can explore my interests more easily. Again, I would say just really take advantage of there's so many resources on campus, um, there's so many faculty members that are willing to help you and really um, help you explore what you're interested in. Um, so that's, I would say, my biggest advice for incoming students.